So this problem, we're looking at Henry and the classes that he's taking. So Henry right now is taking six classes, and he has $80 to spend on tutors. So it's going to cost Henry $20 to get an A and $10 to get a B in each of his classes. So his tutor tells him that for $20, he'll get an A in a class, and for $10, he'll get a B in a class. And Henry's parents also tell him that for every A he gets, he'll earn $50, and for every B he gets, he'll earn $40. So the first thing we want to do in part A is define our variables. So we're going to have some uh, equations and inequalities in here, and we need to define what x and y equal. So we're going to let x be the number of a's he gets so x represents the number of classes in which Henry's going to get an a, and y is going to be the number of classes in which Henry gets a b. That's all we have to do for part A, is just define what our variables are. And then in part B, we need to figure out what his goal is. So Henry's goal is obviously going to be to make as much money as he can, or to maximize his profit. And we need to describe how he's going to do that numerically. So we're going to use our given information and our variables to do that. So if he earns $50 for every A he gets, plus $40 for every B he gets, then we're going to have 50x plus 40y equals his total profit. Now from this equation here, Henry can make an unlimited amount of money. As many classes, if he gets as many A's as he gets, he'll get $50 for each A and $40 for each B. But we have certain constraints placed on him to limit the amount of money that he can make. So first off, we know that he has six classes that he's taking. So that means at most of six A's and B's total, because he can only get take up to six classes. And we know that he doesn't have to get exactly six A's and B's combined, because he can get a C or worse, in which case he won't earn any money. And the other constraint he has is that it's going to cost him a certain amount of money to get an A or a B. So if we assume that he's not going to get an A or a B without a tutor, we know that it's going to cost him $20 for every A plus $10 for every B, and he has at most $80. So again, he doesn't have to spend all $80, but he can spend up to $80. And the last thing we want to note is that we know he cannot get less than zero A's or zero B's. So we know that X is greater than or equal to zero, and Y is greater than or equal to zero. So we know that there's no possible way in which he can get a negative amount of A's or B's. And so now we need to graph this. So obviously, if we're only looking at him getting a positive or a non-negative amount of A's and B's, we can look at only the first quadrant, so x greater than or equal to zero and y greater than or equal to zero. Now, we need to graph, plot the other two inequalities. So I'm gonna get these in the slope intercept form first, just because I think it's easier to work with. So the first one's pretty easy to get in the slope intercept form. We just have y is less than or equal to negative x plus six, and that just comes from subtracting x from both sides. And the other one is going to be y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 8. So we're just going to add negative 20x to both sides and then divide both sides by 10. So now we're going to graph both of these. And so the first thing we do is we're going to find our y-intercept. So our first y-intercept is going to be at 6, which we can see here. And it's got a slope of negative 1. So the slope of negative 1 tells us that for every unit we move down, we move over to the right one. So in other words, if we move down 6 units, we move to the right 6 units, telling us that the point 6, 0 also falls on that line. And now we're just going to connect our two points. Oops. Let's draw a better line than that. And since we have an inequality, we know that not only do the points on this line satisfy this inequality, but everything less than or equal to it will also satisfy. So that means everything under 
this line will satisfy it from the y to the x axis as well because again it has to be a positive value um, for x and y. So now we're going to look at the second equation, inequality, sorry, that tells us that we have an, a y-intercept of 8. So we'll plot that. And a slope of negative 2. So for every negative, every two units we move down, we'll move over 1. So if we move down 2 units, or down 4 units, sorry, we'll move over 2 units. So that's about here. And we'll just connect those two points as well. All right, so now we're done with part C, and we're going to go ahead to part D, and we're going to find our corner points. So obviously, we have a corner point at six, uh, zero, zero 06, sorry. And one thing I failed to mention earlier was that we need to check the feasible region for our graph. And so that's everything that's going to be under both of our equations. So obviously we have this as a feasible region for y less than or equal to negative x plus 6, but then we also need to check for y less than or equal to negative 2x plus 8, and where those two overlap is going to be right in here. And so our corner points are going to be at the corners of where the feasible region ends. So the first one that we're going to find is going to come from the y-intercept of y equals y less than or equal to negative x plus 6. And as we said earlier, that's going to be at 0, 6. So that's our first corner point. Our second corner point is going to be where y less than or equal to negative 2x plus 8 intersects the x-axis. So to find that, we're just going to set y equal to 0. And so we're going to have 0, and we're trying to find where this is equal to. So 0 equal to negative 2x plus 8. And solving gives us 2x equals 8, or x equals 4. So that's this point right here. And that is our second corner point. And that's at 4, 0. And finally, we need to find where these two lines intersect. And that's going to be at this point right here. And so that looks like it's around 2, 4, but we need to solve the, this system of equations, and we're going to have these be equations because we want to be, find where they're equal, and that will tell us where that point is for sure. Because again, our graph might be a little off and it could change where they intersect. So we're just going to set these two equal to each other, so negative x plus 6 equals negative 2x plus 8. And that's going to tell us that x equals 2, just from adding 2 to both sides and subtracting 6 from both sides. And now we're going to take our x equals 2, and I'm just going to plug it into one of our equations, but if you were doing this, you'd probably want to check both to make sure that it's equal. So we're just going to set this, take this into one of the equations, so y equals negative 2 plus 6 tells us that y equals 4. And so that's going to give us our last corner point, which is at 2, comma 4. And so finally, to figure out what the maximum amount of money he, that Henry can make is, is we're going to take each of the corner points and we're going to substitute it into our x and y values for our p equation. So first, let's start with 0, 6. So if we have 0, comma 6, then p equals... 50 times 0 plus 40 times 6, which tells us that P equals 50 times 0 is 0, plus 40 times 6 is 240. Now we're going to look at 4, 0 as our next corner point. So P equals 50 times x, which is 4, plus 40 times y, which is 0, which tells us that p equals 200 plus 0. So p is just going to be 200 in this case. And finally, our last corner point is 2, comma 4. So substituting that into our original equation, or to our profit equation, we have p equal to 50 times 
2 plus 40 times 4, which is going to be 100 plus 160. So P equals 260. And so what we were looking for, again, was the maximum amount of money that Henry could make. And so what this all tells us is that the most money he can make is going to be $260 And that's going to come when x equals 2 and y equals 4. So what that tells us is that he'll earn the most money, $260, when he gets 2 A's and 4 B's. And that's how we do that problem.